Hello, I'm Paul Beck with, uh, I'm at a chess tournament this weekend. It's the Canadian University uh, Chess Championships. And I get to play for uh, the University of Ottawa team because I, uh, I'm still a part-time prof at, at University of Ottawa. I taught, uh, I did teach a course in 2019 there, uh, oceanography in the spring. So uh, I'll just kind of walk around this room. So this is a neat, uh, there's a chess board you can see on the screen. And uh, there's a digital uh, chess board, nice wooden chess board with wooden pieces, but there's magnets inside the pieces and uh, detectors on the squares. So you can play the game uh, you know, on this nice board and the moves are automatically transferred to, uh, to the screens. <coughs> so if all the games you play are on this board, you can um, get an automatic recording of, of all your, uh, all your uh, moves, all your games, whatever speed you were playing. So anyway, um, I just wanted to get a video out to you because, uh, you know, I'm obviously, uh, you know, there's, I actually, you know, the, ga the tournament was two games yesterday, Saturday, and three games Saturday, and two today. And I basically played chess yesterday for 12 hours. I won, I won two, lost one, and uh, I got crushed like a bug uh, this round, played, played a very good player. So playing people mostly rated ahead of me. I'm a little bit rusty. Uh, but anyway, that's what I'm doing here, We're just wandering around this beautiful faculty room. And uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, climate. Of course, you're probably aware of the uh, Newfoundland uh, snow dump. You know, parts of uh, Newfoundland got about, about a meter of snow, almost. And uh, this is happening more and more often, these type of storms under uh, rapid climate change, because what happened in Newfoundland, you got the classic warm ocean, cold continent, so uh, the air, these nor'easters, they come in over the ocean from the northeast and to uh, Newfoundland, of course, to coastal areas. And over the ocean, they pick up huge amounts of uh, moisture and then they come ashore onto the uh, cold, cold island. And, uh, you know, it's just like a fire hose connecting the ocean to the land. So, you know, basically snow rates of 10 centimeters an hour massive uh, snow dumps. But not only that, these storms are getting uh, more and more uh, vicious, more and more extreme. And of course that means uh, extremely high winds. So the winds in this storm peaked, I believe, at about 157 kilometers an hour. So this is essentially uh, category two uh, hurricane speeds. Anything over about 120 kilometers an hour, which is about uh, well, 100 is 62, um, 100 kilometers, 62 miles an hour, so 120 kilometers an hour. You know, highway speeds um, is category one, 157 kilometers an hour, category two. So when you combine this with snow rates of 10 centimeters an hour, of course you get tremendous drifting. You know, the snow would drift against people's houses and basically uh, people would open their doors and they couldn't see anything out. The snow was literally up to the top of their doors. You know, cars were buried all over. Um, and this is on the, uh, you know, east coast of uh, Newfoundland. Now we've had quite a bit of snow here. We've had our own storms. Uh, you get the uh, warm air from the Gulf of Mexico. You know, those storm systems coming across the Gulf of Mexico, picking up all the moisture and then going over the land and basically, uh, you know, again, going over the cold land, basically, uh, you know, having huge snow dumps. And as the storm proceeds to the, from, so it's coming from the Gulf, moving, moving to the northeast, curving around, carrying huge amounts of snow. So the areas that the storm reaches first get more snow dumped and then uh, you know, eventually the moisture content in the storm decreases. So as you go further inland and up, unless uh, there's additional sources of, of moisture like the Great Lakes, for example, then, that, that, then the snow levels uh, decrease. So of course, uh, you know, the big thing in climate news recently is the um, Australian uh, fires. And back in September, I did a video talking about the the uh, sudden stratospheric warming. 
Um, this is, by the way, called the Skittles Room, okay, for the chess tournament. This is where all the players come. So what do you do? You play 12 hours of chess in your games, and when you get a break from your chess, what do you do? You go into the Skittles Room, and you analyze your game. You see where you went wrong. You sit down with your opponent, generally, and you just analyze the game for uh, all of the other time, you know, and uh, until the next round. They're basically... You know, you, you're lucky if you get a chance to eat anything. Because generally, I mean, my game basically ended and then I had to start another game. So basically, I had almost 12 hours of continuous chess. Uh, I did have a good breakfast, but no lunch or no dinner until till very, very late. Um, and we're going into the r last round. So, you know, there's, there's I'm, you know, so basically, I mean, I am in the, the, the tribe of uh, chess players. If you play chess, you'll, you'll know what it's, uh, what it's like. So. The big climate story, is, of course, lately is, is the Australian fire. So back in September, I did a video about the sudden stratospheric warming and the indices uh, that can measure that and uh, predicted that Australia would be super hot and super dry and there'd be wildfires galore. And that's exactly what we've had um, since then. But a, a couple of weeks ago, yeah, a week and a half ago, it's like somebody flicked a, basically flicked a switch. And uh, the big heat dome over Australia broke and uh, the jet streams weren't deflecting north and south of Australia. They started going over Australia carrying rain. And they're actually torrential rain in a bunch of places and that rain, you know, there was something like 120 ongoing fires a few days ago and about 45 of them we put out by rain and then there was even more rain in the last couple of days, uh, which has even put out more fires. So. Firefighters there are getting a break, and they're getting a break from all of this um, rain. And basically, I looked at the same metrics that predicted that the uh, Australia would be exceptionally hot and exceptionally dry. And lo and behold, that curve, uh, basically that curve went way, way up, predicting you know, huge sudden stratospheric warming, really hot and dry in Australia. And then basically it went down to, uh, to neutral again. And that happened, and almost immediately the jet stream started going over Australia, and uh, the rain went there, and it really mitigated the, uh, the uh, well, it really shut off the fires, basically, uh, lets them recover a bit. So it's, it's a very interesting metric to, uh, to watch uh, very, very carefully. Um, now, my most recent videos, as you know, I was talking about the Arctic uh, sea ice, and uh, you know what would happen when we have zero Arctic sea ice, and basically, you know, it doesn't look good. Lacking sea ice in the Arctic, um, there's a bit of confusion, I think, because uh, you know people are always talking about September when we lose September ice. Um, you know, that's catastrophic, but it's really the, the the sun angle is very very low in September. So if you look at the graphs, you know, some of the graphs in my previous videos when I was discussing this. The effect of increased radiation in September with no sea ice is, is actually minimal, it doesn't cause a lot of heating. But presumably when we have zero sea ice in September, it's going to be much, much lower than normal in the uh, summer months uh, preceding September. And in those months, the sun angle is much, much higher. There's a lot more solar absorption as a result because, you know, reflectivity has a big, uh, fun the, the biggest effect is the angle of the sun. As the angle of the sun becomes more and more shallow on the water, the reflectivity goes higher and higher and higher, which is the case in September, even if there's no sea ice, just water. Um, the angle, the sun's so far on the horizon that the angle is really shallow and the reflectivity is very, very high. Um, it would be extremely high if the water was very calm. Of course, if there's waves, then there'll be more absorption of, of, of the sunlight for, for a rougher surface. Uh, but really, it's the months, uh, you know, so, so the calculations were based on if the sea ice was gone all of the summer months. So, you know, about, so April, May, June, July, August, September, going into October, you know, when there's still sunlight in the Arctic with no ice in those particular months, the warming is equivalent to about a trillion tons of uh, CO2, which at, uh, you know, over the last decade or so, our average uh, emission rate is about 40 gigatons of CO2 per year. That's uh, emissions plus land use change. 
So that's equivalent, you know, if you, if you take a trillion and divide it by 40 uh, gigatons, you get 25 years of, of global warming Is there effectively. Any trust club presidents or okay, TA so, captains, so basically, can you please go to the playing hall right now? Because we're going to have that meeting to decide who gets the most determined for next year. Okay, so I'm going to have to go. All presidents in this room, I've got a couple um, more please minutes, head down but, to the playing hall. Everyone else can stay here in this vicinity. Thank you. Sorry about the interruption, but I'll head over to the playing hall in a couple minutes. But that means that the last couple games must end. Basically, the time limit on these chess games is you get 75 minutes each person plus 30 seconds a move. So every move you make, you get 30 seconds added to your time. So this is great for the players because it means even if you get really, really low on time, you make a move, it adds 30 seconds. So you're guaranteed as long as you keep time on your clock. And if you, if you run out of time, you lose the game automatically. But, you know, that, that gives you a decent amount of time to play, uh, you know, some dec half decent moves. Uh, but what it means for the tournament director is it means that a game can go forever. You know, if it's a really, really long game and people are just playing moves, trying to make incremental changes, different positions, then basically the game can go for hours and hours and hours. So you never know, you know, and the whole tournament can't start it, you know, if there's still a game going on. So, so uh, anyway, um, so I gotta, I'll be going to play the last round and, uh, you know, this uh, tournament is in Kitchener at the uh, Wilfrid Laurier University, nice, uh, nice campus. Um, got all the ex-presidents uh, sort of of the university up on the wall in the pictures. And uh, so basically, uh, yeah, our team, uh, in order to place in the top three, we have, to, we, ha we have to win this round. We have to actually, we don't have much choice. So, so you, can, uh, you, can, you can wish me luck in it. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to uh, say hi and touch base. And uh, I, uh, you know, in the last few weeks, I've been on CTV television and CBC News, uh, you know, almost, uh, you know, about seven or eight times on CTV and also on CBC a bunch of times. In fact, they wanted me to go on the uh, TV program today. And I said, well, I could do it walking around a chess tournament you know, and talk about chess, but uh, not so much Australia. So, so anyway, uh, you know, thanks for, for tuning in. And uh, I'll, uh, you know, there's loads of topics to talk about. I never, I never ran out of stuff to talk about. Uh, you know, you're probably aware of the Davos conference uh, going on. Uh, that's happening uh, during the week. And it's going to be interesting because uh, Greta Thunberg is an invited speaker and Trump is supposed to be at the conference. And they've uh, only been in the same room once and uh, you may have seen the image when he was walking by and she was in the background sort of glaring at this, you know, crazy uh, climate denier who's, uh, you know, contributing a lot to destroying the climate of our, of our planet. So. So anyway, um, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll, we'll see you guys soon. Okay, bye for now.